Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. Perfect and true. Perfect and true. Together we come. Absolutely not. Why? Because they talk over here, over my head. 
And they expect me to understand those 17 steps that they did in their head to get to the next place. And where do I wind up? Left behind. Right? It, it happens. Uh, so I, I was a math teacher that, that struggled through and, and made it through college with a, with a C, but had a heart to share information. Because they went through the same struggles I did. Well, let me go ahead and tell you, that's the kind of pastor you got a, a pastor that has to go in and, 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 and sometimes he's got to show me over and over and over before I get it. But once I get it, while it's fresh on my mind, I want to share it. And I want to show you how good it is. So please don't be intimidated when you come up to something that, that seems, I'll never get this or I'll never figure that out. He made it for us to figure out. He made it for us to come together and, and see what he's telling us. And so that's what we're going to look at this morning. How did you come about this particular one? It was interesting because this particular verse was in 1 Peter. And we, we looked at some verses in 1 and 2 Peter last week. And let's look what it says. Concerning the Gentiles, God says in the prophecy of Hosea, how many of y'all go home and say, I want to study Hosea tonight? Nobody? It's one of those minor prophets. Well, it must not be important if he's minor. No, it's very important. All of God's word is God's reading, right? So look what it says. Concerning the Gentiles, God says in the prophecy of Hosea, those who were not my people, I will now call my people, and I will love those whom I did not love before. What? Those who were not my people, I will now call my people, and I will love those whom I did not love before. Does that make any kind of sense? And what's interesting is it's in Hosea. It's in Romans chapter 9, as it says on the board. And it's also in 1 Peter chapter 1. Or 2. Anyway, it's right there. Right? But why would he show it three times? Must be something to it if God's going to mention it three times in his Bible. Would you agree? And, and how many of us have, have studied that very intently in the past and are very happy that we have a full understanding now? Aren't you glad you came this morning? We're going to have a fuller understanding, praise God, before we leave, I hope. That, that, that's my hope this morning. And I'm going to introduce by reading, just reading, the first ten verses of chapter 11. We're not going to go into them, but that's where we're going to start. Let's give you that little background. We're going to pray and get started at, at verse 11. I asked then, has God rejected His own people, the nation of Israel? Of course not. I myself am an Israelite. Paul is writing this. A descendant of Abraham and a member of the tribe of Benjamin. No, God has not rejected His own people whom He chose from the very beginning. Do you realize what the Scriptures say about this? Elijah the prophet complained to God about the people of Israel and said, Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars. I'm the only one left. And now they're trying to kill me too. What a positive message. <laughs> right? And he's talking about his people. He's not talking about the foreign ones that other people didn't know God. And, and do you remember God's reply? He said, no. I have 7,000 others who have never bowed down to Baal, the false god Baal. It's the same today. For a few of the people of Israel have remained faithful because of God's grace. His undeserved kindness choosing them. He revealed it to them. And since it is through God's kindness. Remember God is good. Kindness is good. Would you all agree? It's through His kindness. It's not by their good works. Grace isn't by works. Amen. Undeserved favor. For in that case, God's grace would not be what it really is. Free and undeserved. So God in His grace opened the eyes of some of the Jewish people to see that Jesus truly was the Messiah. So, by the way, we call some of those apostles, remember? They were Jewish apostles. So this is the situation. Most of the people of Israel have not found the favor of God they were looking for so earnestly. A few have, the ones God has chosen, but their hearts of the rest were hardened. Well, who hardened them? Them? Our hearts, I don't know if you know it, usually come out hard against God. We like to please self more than we like to please God. Anybody else have that problem? We, we do. But, but God will allow it too. And He's going to tell that. Partially hardened hearts. As the scriptures say, God has put them into a deep sleep 
To this day, he has shut their eyes so they do not see, and closed their ears so they do not hear. Likewise, David said, let their bountiful table become a snare. Who does this sound like? A bountiful table has got plenty, and instead we turn away from God. Y'all ever heard of a society that would do that? God blesses with, with more wealth than, say, other people in the world, and, and, and yet they turn away from God, even though He's been the one blessing? Can y'all imagine a nation that would do that? Don't take much imagination, does it? To this day, their eyes, are, they shut their eyes, their, their ears are closed, their, their bountiful table has become a snare. Get, get hooked on being comfortable more than anything else. A trap that makes them think all is well. Does the lost world think all is pretty well? Pretty much. They, they, they can think they could do some improving, just go a little further away from God. Ah. Uh, don't, don't ever tell the lost world no. That makes them upset. Amen? Christians have a hard enough time with it. Let their blessings cause them to stumble. Let them get what they deserve. What do any of us deserve? The Bible says the wages of sin is death. That's eternal death. That's hell. That's the deserving. And, and he said let them get what they deserve when they turn their eyes away from the one who can save them. Last verse that we're going to just read. Let their eyes go blind so they cannot see, and let their backs be bent forever. Wow, that's negative. We're going to look at that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for revealing your word to us. Thank you for giving us the big picture, even here in, in, in Romans chapter 11, Lord. And I pray, Father, that we see it, Father, and we see who we are, whose we are, where we are. And the God who's chosen us. Father, I pray that we choose you in your way ahead of everything else. That we love you back the way you loved us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, did God's people stumble and fall beyond recovery? Uh, I want to talk to you about a couple of covenants. What's a covenant? I, I'm glad that they made a covenant marriage because that allows us to still do marriages in the church. We agree with the law of Louisiana about what a covenant marriage is. One man, one woman for, for life. We, we agree with that. And so we do that marriage. We don't do the other one in the church in, in, anymore because we don't agree with their different definitions of marriage. They get to have it. The lost world gets to have any definitions they want, right? The dictionary is not God's book. That's man's book. But which one do we follow? So, that, that, that's, they're, they're free for, for all that. And that's okay. It's, it's not okay for salvation or for following God or honoring God. But it's okay that they get to, to do that. But for the church, and, and it goes against people, and it, 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 it makes people say the church is hateful and all that. Listen, if the church doesn't point to honoring the Jesus who can save us and take us to heaven, who will? Who will? So, it's out of love for those that aren't looking. That we say, no, this is still the way. Jesus is the way. And it's not your actions that get you heaven. It's your lack of action and not making Jesus your Lord. And it's the same that we have for us. So, this isn't a, a hateful thing. This is, please know the way to heaven is by turning to Jesus. And let Him guide you the rest of the way. And He can guide you to what's right and what's wrong. But we've got to listen to Him above our own passions anyway. So, how about this nation? The God's people... We already said the people of Israel, they stumbled. Well, how did Israel come to be? God picked the big nation and says, I want that nation. Now he picked an old man. And he says, I'm going to make a nation of you. Even though Egypt was big and strong, and you had all the ites, we said, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, all the ites, right? Had all of those out there. He says, I'm going to start a brand new nation. I'm going to start with a guy named Abram. Abram was childless. His wife was childless. That's how that works. Neither one, uh, you're right, they hadn't had, had a, a child. And, and he was all the way till he was 100 years old. She was 90. But during that time, he says, go to a place I'm going to show you. And, and when you get there, I'm going to make patience out of you. I, I, I'm going to bless you in, in so many ways. Let's, let's look what he says exactly. So. Why do we put this on the board so you'll know where I'm getting my information? Now the Lord has said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house to the land I will show you. 
I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Now listen to this one. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of earth shall be blessed. That was a covenant God made. When does God lie? Now what did Abraham have to do in return? I'm going to bless you. Is he going to is he going to follow Jesus perfectly? No, he is going to go. But we read this morning, he did some dumb stuff. By the way, not following God's perfect way is kind of dumb. Would you agree? But he did some dumb stuff. It almost cost him his life. It almost cost him his life. He did, he did some really dumb stuff. But it, in, in the end, he, he kept turning back to God. And, and putting God first. And so God, he's going to, going to, he made that covenant with Abraham, but he also made the covenant with us, didn't he? What did he say? I'm blessed. Now this covenant is conditional. The one with Abraham was, it's going to happen, Abraham. But with us, it's conditional. I'll bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. Now this one's unconditional. In you, all the families of earth shall be blessed. What's the blessing? Here's the big blessing. You know what the Jewish people have done for us? You know what the Jewish people have done for us? They gave us a guidebook to heaven. Amen? Even the apostles were Jewish. I, I know many of the, 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 uh, the, the Jewish people don't believe in the New Testament. But who did God get to write the New Testament? <laughs> Pretty much the Jewish apostles and those that they influenced. Luke wasn't a Jew, but he was influenced by Paul. Right? So, all of that's, all of that's there. Okay? I'll bless those. So, those covenants are there. Now, later he came along, and he put another covenant alongside that one. He didn't do away with that one, the Abrahamic covenant. The one that said, Israel, you're my people. And I'm the one who's making you a nation. You don't have any standing. You can't say, we were a great nation. We were doing so good that God picked us to be His. No, we got an old man, an old woman, and He put them together and says, y'all going to have enough kids that are going to be like the sand on the seashore. You're going to have to wait for it. And I'm going to give you all of this stuff. I'm going to let you have the kingdom, all those kind of things, but you're not going to get it in your lifetime. So Abraham lived in a tent the rest of his life. He says, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through but I've got something waiting for me. And, and the Bible in the Hall of Fame of Faith talks about his faith. The father of faith, they call it, because he was the first, even though, even though he messed up. Anybody ever mess up before? Yeah. But then the, the second covenant came alongside that. Moses came, okay, and God gave him the Ten Commandments. And that covenant was different than Abram's because you had to. If you'll follow these things, if you will keep them, I'll let you live in the land. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to do all these kind of things. But if you don't, and he gave the list of things that would go the other way, that's different than Moses and than Abraham's covenant, because you had to do things to keep this one. You had to keep the law. Who can keep all of the law? And that was the demands of the covenant. You had to keep it. It did change that God is going to what? Bless Israel. But if you don't keep these, I lay before you blessings and curses, you're going to get a lot of curses. And if you don't know it, they didn't keep it. And when the Messiah came, they rejected it. They rejected it. And so Israel is still under a bunch of cursings. You read that when it said about the parting of their hearts. You read that part. So, where are we now? We're in that time of, of Israel's cursings, even though he said, ultimately, what's going to happen in the Abrahamic covenant? You're going to get these things, I promise you. I can't lie to you. They're, it's going to happen. But not yet, because you've got to get through your time of cursings, the, the blindness that he talked about. So let's go back to Romans chapter 11 and see what it said there after verse 11. Did God's people stumble and fall beyond recovery? They're in the time of curses. Will they ever recover? Well, we got God's word on it. What does it say? If I put it on the board, I thought it was. What does it say? Of course not. They're coming back. They're coming back strong. The Abrahamic covenant is still there. I said it would happen. It will happen. God can't lie. Okay? So we know that. They were disobedient. So God made salvation available to the 
Gentiles. At that point, you should shout and say, praise God. What if only the Jewish people could go to heaven? Where would everybody else wind up? So, one more time. We should all shout and say, praise God. If you're a Gentile, amen? So that, that's there. It's telling us that. Praise God. Salvation is available to the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people. Not under the Abrahamic covenant, except... All that bless Israel will be blessed. He wanted his own people to become jealous and claim what we have for themselves. They're still looking for the Messiah. We found him. They want, God wants them to find their Messiah. And it's going to happen. But it's not going to happen until what we're going to cover in Revelations. But it's going to happen. But meanwhile, meanwhile, here we are. Here we are. This is interesting because when Paul is writing this, the Jewish people are trying to kill him. Go read the book of Acts and how he was in jail. They want to get him so bad, they want to do a jailbreak and kill him. They're plotting against him. When he goes and tells the Gentiles about Jesus, the Jewish people come and run him out of town. Why are you doing that? And yet, what's he saying? Remember what God says? Bless them, and you'll be blessed. What would you want to do if somebody was trying to kill you or, or rob people about from hearing about Jesus? What would you want to do? You'd want to slot them, not bless them, right? And, and what's amazingly interesting is, you know, the Jewish people got scattered all over the world for thousands of years. Did you know that? From AD 70, basically, until uh, 1948, somewhere along, along in that time, they were scattered all over the world. And how were they treated around the world? How many have heard the word anti-Semitism? That's pretty standard around the world. Did you know that? If you want to prove that God is real and this Bible is real, look at the anti-Semitism. How bad did it get in World War II? Extermination. Everyone they could catch. And to walk down the street with a yellow scar on and all that so that you could be the target for extermination. And that's how bad it was. But you know what was interesting about all that? Amazingly interesting? It caused them to preserve their culture and their identity. They never assimilated into other cultures. They managed to, to stay that way. And then, then amazingly, there in 1948, without an army, so to speak, without enough people to, to go and take a land, the land was given to them. Which land? The land that they would be kicked out of in AD 70. Thousands of years ago. It would be the equivalent of the Cherokee nation moving back to eastern United States and taking their lands back without casinos to take the money away from everybody. You know, the, the revenge is going on. The, the, the Indian nation casinos take a lot of money from, from the others. But, but it, not only going back, but take, getting their land back would be that people wouldn't grumble like they grumble in the Middle East. But that's only been a couple of hundred years since Andrew Jackson, the Trail of Tears. What are the chances that they're going to move back and, and re-get their language back and set up their own government and have their boundaries back? What do you think the chances are? Many have already assimilated into another lifestyle, right? And, and so that's probably not going to happen. But we got to see that happen with, with the nation of Israel. Why? Because when God said it, that's it. Whether you believe it or not, that, that's it. Kevin, could you go turn the Wi-Fi off on the computer? It's just throwing the sand out again, if you don't mind. <clears throat> All right. So, again, where does that put us? Well, one thing God has used the United States for is to protect that nation. Did you know that? God's used the United States and His cloud to, to protect that nation. Now, God can do it on His own, but wonderfully, God chose to use the United States to do that. Has the United States been blessed? Yeah, we even sing a song, God Bless America. Was it on the wrong? Yeah. 
and they were thinking. Okay. Uh, anyway, technical difficulties, but we should be through that. So with that happening, we're still being blessed. What happens is if we turn our back on Israel? What does the Bible say? Uh, no, if, you, if you take care of Israel, I'll take care of you. If you don't, the curses are there. And, and that's not a, a given. That's not that, that kind of, uh, of a, a prophecy or, or, or covenant where I'm going to do it either way. It's this is what you do and this is what I do. You see the difference in the two kind of covenants. Abrahamic covenant was it's going to happen. Mosaic covenant, if you do this, this is going to happen. If you don't do this, this is going to happen. Lost world, Gentile world, if you bless Israel, you'll be blessed. If you don't, you'll be cursed. So, you meet somebody Jewish on the street and they're not treating you very nice or they're treating you wonderful, how should you treat them? They're still part of God's people whether they know it or not. Pretty interesting. They haven't fallen away so far. He says, of course not. That's not going to happen. So it says, now if the Gentiles were enriched because the people of Israel turned down God's offer of salvation... When did they turn down God's offer of salvation? What did they call Jesus when He was on the earth? He does what He does by Beelzebub, they said. He has a demon, they said. Right? And, and they said, don't do that. Right? That's blasphemy. But, but that's, that's what was stated. Right? And, and so that's what they were saying. And they turned Him down. They said, we're not going to take Him from our, our Messiah. It's not going to be there. So, said, so... What happened after that? Well, he's going to tell us. If the Gentiles are rich because the people of Israel turned down God's offer of salvation, think how much greater a blessing the world will share when they finally accept it. One thing that, that the world doesn't understand, one is some people think, well, there's only so much money in the world and those people got it, we need to go get it from them. That's not how economy works. If you don't believe me, ask the, the guys who made the computer in the garage and suddenly they got rich when before all they had was a garage. Right? The, 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 the economy is expandable. The, the amount of money out there is expandable because if you create something, it's got value. And so you have more money out there. You don't have to take it somebody else. You can create. It's not easy. But it, it, it happens that way. Well, it's the same way with God's goodness. You're not in competition for God's goodness. The more we follow God, the more goodness is available to the lost world. So, if, if you say, well, what if the Jewish people get, get God's favor back? What happens to us? They'll have it. We won't have it no more. That's not how it works. The more people that have the Spirit of God, it should be the more God's goodness is available. So how much better would it be if you had another team show up and say, we're on this Jesus wagon too. Everybody's got the Messiah. Well, that's going to happen. You know where that's going to happen according to Scripture? In a time in the Bible called the Millennial Kingdom. It's after Jesus' second coming. It's going to happen. The church and the Jewish people are going to be serving God together. It's going to be an amazing time. Okay? So, one having something that the other doesn't have right now is not a competition. Our job is to help get it over there. How many of y'all know that there are many Jewish people who have chosen Christ? The majority have not. What do they call those who have stuck with God no matter what? That God blessed to see that. It's called the remnant. The remnant. Now, if you're sowing a dress, and I don't know much about it, but if you are, and you save some material that the dress was made out of, what do you call that piece of material? It's patchwork quilt resource. That's what that is. But it, it's also, we call those remnants, don't we? You can even see it at the, at the, uh, at the store where you get those baking engine pieces, the remnants of, of those pretty slices that they got. Okay? Well, I pray that no matter what society does, you stay part of the remnant. That like that 7,000, he said, who never bowed to Baal. And so there is a remnant that God preserves on earth no matter what. But the vast majority of Israel people, of their people, have not chosen or recognized Jesus as the Messiah. And so it said it's going to, when they finally accept it, how good is it going to be? Verse 13, I'm saying all this, especially to you Gentiles. God has appointed me as the apostle to, to the Gentiles. I stress this. He really wants us to know this. And yet, what did he do when he went to a new town? He went to the Jewish part of the town first. When they rejected him, he turned to the Gentiles. 
God built a church on that. The church is still going 2,000 years later. How weird. It's impossible, and yet who can do it? God. Some of the Jewish people were saved. The vast majority weren't. They didn't recognize their Messiah. For I will somehow to make the people of Israel jealous for what you Gentiles have, so that I might save some of them. Save some of them, meaning the remnant. What do you want you and I to do? Be satisfied consumers of Jesus' love. If we're satisfied with His love, then we don't have to have the earth's value system. Our value system is trusting our God, no matter what the circumstance. And if we have joy, doesn't He say more than once, choose joy? Or he says it this way, rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. He doesn't just tell us once, He tells us twice every time He says it. I say it again, rejoice, choose joy, no matter what your circumstances. They didn't say you chose the circumstances or you enjoyed the circumstances. You have joy because through Christ you've overcome everything that you're dealing with. It's already settled. It's written in the book. If your name is in the book, it's already settled. Choose joy. For since their rejection meant God offered salvation to the rest of the world, their acceptance will be even more wonderful. It will be life for those who were dead. This is why we say, praise God. It, it, it's so important to recognize this. Uh, we're going to get in, in the Revelation today. We're going to talk about the 70 sets of seven. So they call it 70 weeks sometimes. But it's, uh, that's how many years there are. 70 times seven. Okay? But what's interesting about that, it goes so accurately up until Jesus' death. And then it shuts off. At 69 sets of seven. And then you get another set of seven over here. And guess what's in between the end of that 69 and that last seven years? The churches. That's when Jesus went on the cross. People started receiving the Holy Spirit of God when they believed in Jesus. And that's going to be there. So the calendar quit and then it starts up again. What do we call those last seven years? Tribulation. That's what... Most of the, the Revelation book is about. And so it's saying, if, if Israel hadn't rejected the Messiah, you and I wouldn't have that window of opportunity. And the very fact that you're here says, I believe your word. That we have an opportunity to choose eternal life through Christ Jesus, through the Messiah. And so we've got that window. How long will it last? I don't know. Based on what I see around me, not much longer. And so we should rejoice if we've recognized him and we've taken the hand of Jesus as he's reached out during this time, this church age time, and we've accepted it. He says, for since their rejection made God offer salvation to the rest of the world, the Gentiles, their acceptance will be even more wonderful. It will be life for those who are dead. For since Abraham and the other patriarchs were holy, talked about Abraham a while ago, their descendants were also holy. They passed on the word of God to them, the good news to them. Just as an entire batch of Noah's holy, because a portion was given as, as an offering, is holy. We could go into that, but that's a sermon in itself. But we're going to get to the same idea as it follows up with the next example. For if the roots of the tree are holy, the branches will be too. Okay? That's where we're going to start. God gave the roots, the apostles for us. Right? Abraham for the Jewish people. He gave the roots, and, and the branches that learn or get their nutrients from those roots are going to be holy also. Okay? But some of these branches from Abraham's tree, some of the people of Israel have been broken off, and you Gentiles, who were branches of a wild olive tree, have been grafted in. What does that mean? How many of y'all uh, grow satsumas? How many of y'all have ever had problems on low on the sat symmetry with branches coming off that have thorns. Low on the sat symmetry. Not up, but generally low. Have y'all ever had that problem before? Just thorns on the bottom. Why? Here's, here's why. Did you know that the root system on that tree is of another plant than your sat symmetry? Why? Because in Louisiana, in, in most places where you get frost and stuff, you need that root system to, to keep a, a sustainable crop. 
And so they cut that tree off. They take one from the, the, the Satsuma tree. And you've got this native uh, citrus plant. And they put it on there and, and they tape it up and they graft it. And it grows together. So when the limb grows on the bottom, it's grown from that native wild tree. But the top part is that, 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 that particular tree. So if you ever notice on the sat symmetry, you'll go down and see a little mark, a little scar on the bottom, and that's where it was grafted. Well, he said there were some in, in, in the, the, the people of Israel who wouldn't listen. So what he did was he took those branches off and he grafted the Gentiles on. Now, some people think it's this way. Well, the Jews messed up. Now those Gentiles in the church, and they don't count anymore. Paul said, absolutely not. You got it wrong. But they're under a curse. Yeah, but that's going to end. That's going to end. And so that's what he's talking about here. You've been grafted in in this wonderful opportunity for us Gentiles to be with God for eternity. And you were called the what? The wild olive tree. How many of y'all have been called the wild olive tree before? How many of y'all remember wilder years? Please don't confess now. Uh, so now you've received the blessing God has promised Abraham and his children. Eternity with God. Sharing in the rich nourishment that comes from the root of God's special olive tree. God's word that has been passed on to us from who? Israel. The Jewish nation has kept this word for us. It was given to them through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But it's been passed on to us. But you must not brag about being grafted in to replace the branches that were broken off. You're just a branch, not the root. In other words, stay humble. Don't join into that to say, oh, those Jewish people, no one of those anti semitism They killed Jesus and all that. Listen, our sin killed Jesus. Amen? No matter who held the hammer, our sin, my sin, is what he died for. So, again, what do you say? You bless Israel. You'll be blessed. You curse Israel. You'll be cursed. That's important. Why? Because Israel is going to be your brother and sister for the millennial kingdom. And, and, and beyond. For eternity. Well, you say, those branches were broken off to make room for me. God saw me and said, I don't need them anymore. What is that? False pride. And it's false because it isn't true. It's pride because sometimes that is true. The church is in the place of blessing and we don't feel blessed. We keep trying to fit in with a lost and dying world. How do we stay Christian and still look like everybody else? Because they might say something ugly about us. They might say we don't fit in. They might say we use hate speech because we say, you know, I'm going to follow God instead of what might feel right to you. I, I have enough trouble bowing me. I, don't, I can't fix anybody else. i got enough problems because a lot of things feel right to this body. But the Bible says this body has got to die and get out of the way so I can go to heaven and get a body that doesn't worry about how it feels so much but worries about honoring God. Anybody got a body that, that does things you wish you wouldn't do? Craves things that you know aren't good right by God? We all got that. That's why we need a Savior. And our God is so good, He did exactly that. He saved us. Yes, remember those branches were broken off because they didn't believe in who? They didn't believe in Christ. What did they believe in? Their thoughts. Their passions. Their chosen understanding that wasn't shaped by what? God's will, God's way. God's revelation to us of His will and His way. It wasn't shaped by that. It was by our intellect. Surely we're smart enough to figure this out. We do dumb things. I do. I'll just confess for me. I do some dumb things sometimes. Do you? If it's not of God, it's dumb. It's dumb. If I believe that God is right, then I can, it's exceedingly dumb. And I believe God is right. We don't excuse our sin. We go to Jesus and we ask forgiveness again. And He's faithful and just to do that for us. And remind us the next time, don't go there again, child. It doesn't help anything. He says they were broken off because they didn't believe in Christ. And you are there because you do believe. So don't think highly from yourself, but fear what could happen. For if God didn't spare the original branches, He won't spare you either. He's talking to the church. We read about the church in Ephesus. He said, I'll take your lampstand away. You won't be a church anymore. He took away not only the lampstand, the church. He took away the whole town. 
It's not there anymore. He filled in the port that made him so, so well known. Notice that guy can be both kind and severe. He says, the kindness is I offer you a choice. The severity is, it's a choice you made. Amen? This guy bad because he says, if you step off that cliff, you'll fall and, and it's not going to feel good. Oh, God's mean because he made a cliff here. But he marked it. He said, don't step over there. What happens? Bad thing. It's whose choice is it to stay in the good place? <clears throat> so it's severe to go the wrong way. But it's wonderful to go the right way. And he gave us the choice. Those who don't know Christ don't have a choice. They made their choice saying, I don't want to know. I don't want to hear about that. I don't want to even think about that. Because this way seems right to me. But if you stop, stop uh, trusting, you'll be cut off. The church will be cut off at that point. And if the people of Israel turn from their unbelief, they'll be grafted again. If they turn from their unbelief. I'm going to show you before we close, Lord willing, how that happens. For God has the power to grant them back into the truth. Remember, He said they haven't fallen forever, so He is going to put them back into His, His family. You by nature were of a branch cut from a wild olive tree. There you go again, being wild. So if God was willing to do something contrary to the nature by grafting you into this cultivated tree, it wasn't natural, Gentiles, for us to be part of God's family. It's supernatural. How many of you would rather be super than just normal? You're supernatural if you join into to His cultivated tree. He will be far more eager to graft the original ones back to where they belong. I want you to understand this mystery, dear brothers and sisters, so that you will not feel proud of yourself. He always goes for that humble stuff. Some of the, the, the people of Israel have hard hearts. But this will only last, listen, this will only last until the full number of Gentiles come to Christ. That hardness of heart of the Jewish people only lasts until the full number of those he has counted of Gentiles come to Christ. What would you call that when the full number of Gentiles come to Christ? It's the end of the church opportunity or the church age. And then he's going to work to what? Regraft, regraft, re-put the Jewish people back into that prominent place. So you and I are from where they rejected. Until they follow Christ. Do you see that? That's going to happen. He says, that's the natural way. They're the ones I intended to have it. But in the middle, and in His wonderful goodness, He chose to put His church. And listen, it's a high place. It's the bride of Christ. And so all Israel will be saved. The scriptures say the one who rescues them come from uh, Jerusalem. And He will turn Israel away from its ungodliness. And this is my covenant with them that I will take away their sins. <laughs> Many of the people are now Israel, excuse me, are now enemies of the good news. And, and this benefits you Gentiles. Remember that time period between the 69th set of seven and finally that last one? It is benefiting us. Yet they are still the people he loves because he chose their ancestors. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Last verse on this, and we'll look at one more about what happened. Soon. For God's gifts and His call will never be withdrawn. The promises are still there; they haven't been taken away. So when you see somebody claims to be a Christian who's against the Jewish people, they haven't read God's word. They might know about Noah and the ark, and they might know about Jonah and the well, but they don't know God's word and the fullness of it. How will He bring them back? How will He bring them back? If you go with us in this study into Revelations and end times, we're going to be looking at these scriptures a good bit more. And here's two verses. And it shall be in that day, this is the day at the end of the, of the, the time on earth, just before Jesus' second coming, or after His second coming, it shall be in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. That tiny place it, you put three of them in the state of four, and he's going to come against all the world that comes against them. By the way, they've come against them before. The Six-Day War and all those. And what happens when all the neighbors jump on them? They lose. If you ever watch Mighty, Mighty Mouse, here I come to save the day. I don't know if y'all remember that old, old cartoon. But they had all jump on him. All the big bad guys said Mighty Mouse is a mouse with a cape. But all of a sudden, from that big ball of all of them, they just fly away. 
there's mighty now singing his song. Here I come to save you. That, that's what happens with Israel. They all jump on. And why? Because God is the power in this. So look what happens. This, this is the, the great part. And I will pour on the house of David, that's Israel, on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication. And they will look on me whom they pierced. When did Jesus get pierced? At the crucifixion. We sing a song, nails in my hand, nails in my feet, he was pierced. How about the, 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 uh, the spear that went through his side? He was pierced. They will look on him, they pierce, it says, and some on me, whom they pierce, it says here. And they will mourn for one who mourns for his only son. This is the only son that they had killed. That they rejected. And they're going to grieve about that. Look what I've done to my Messiah. And, and they're going to, if you keep reading in those scriptures, they're going to all come to this conclusion separate from each other. It's just going to, the heart suddenly is going to be opened up to who the Messiah is. It's going to happen. And what will happen? Yes, they will mourn for Him as one mourns for the only Son, and grieve for Him as one grieves for the firstborn. The Holy Spirit is going to come on them, and they're going to recognize the Messiah. They're all going to receive Him at once, and right after that, the Millennium Kingdom starts, and, and the church and, and uh, Israel gets to be together in the Millennium Kingdom. Pretty amazing stuff. What did we cover some history in chapter 11 of Romans? Did we? We had to talk about all that grafting and orange trees and all that kind of stuff. But how many of y'all kind of followed that, that discussion? Not too many hands. That's why I like to be in a Pentecost church. Hands up everywhere. <laughs> you know, but, but in that discussion, you see those things. And you start to understand what Revelations is about. And all those things that have happened. By the way, I understand this now because I understand Revelations better. Not completely, but better. You get to come and join us in that study tonight, and on Wednesday night we'll repeat it. Right? So we get to know God's Word better, and we understand where we fit in. About the glorious future that God has for us. About how we treat our, our, our Jewish brothers and sisters, even though they don't know it yet. And how we help other Gentiles. In this time of opportunity, come to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. If you've never made Jesus your Lord, today's a great day. I don't know when that door is going to close. There's nothing that stops the church age from ending at any point in time. There's something that stops the second coming because this last seven years has to take place. And that hasn't taken place. Okay? But when he comes for his church, any moment. That's kind of scary. It's just to let you know the choice is, do I want this or not? I pray you do. I pray you do. Church, if that's where we're at, we need to be about the Lord's business. Amen? If it's not where we're at, we still need to be about the Lord's business. He is so good. Let's stand in place.